By now, we've covered a lot of questions on finding the derivatives for various types of functions. Let's do a quick recap. Differentiating a polynomial function, y is equal to x to the power of 5 minus 3x squared plus 8. Well, here, we'll simply apply the power rule. Right? Yeah. So applying the power rule to find the derivative of the first term, we'll simply bring the exponent 5 to the front, x. Then exponent 5 subtracts 1, we get 4. Now, second term. Applying the power rule again, bring the exponent 2 to the front, times negative 3, we get negative 6, x. Then the exponent 2 subtracts 1, we get 1. Last term positive a. The derivative of any constant is 0. It's nothing. We're done. Next, differentiating a trigonometry function, y is equal to sine x. The derivative y prime is, derivative of sine is cosine. You got it. Done. Next, differentiating an exponential function, y is equal to e to the power of x. Well, this guy is very special, right? e to the power of x is the only function in the universe where the derivative is exactly the same as the function itself. Okay? So the derivative is just the function itself. Next, differ differentiating a log function, y is equal to ln x. Ah, the derivative of ln x is? 1 over x, right? You got it. As you can see, all of the functions we've dealt with so far explicitly defines one variable in terms of another variable. So in this case, the functions here all have y explicitly defined as a function of x. y explicitly defined as a function of x. For example, here, y is explicitly, means obviously. y is obviously defined as a sine function of x. Here, y is explicitly defined as an exponential function of x. Now, the process of finding the derivative of an explicit function is called explicit differentiation. Explicit differentiation. Now, what's the opposite of explicit? That would be implicit. Which means implied, something that's not directly expressed. See, unlike these functions, which all have y isolated to one side of the equation, so that y can be explicitly defined as a function of x, some functions are defined implicitly by a relation between x and y. For example, the famous circle equation, which is defined as x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. So in this case, I'm showing you a circle centered at 0, 0, centered at the origin, with a radius of 5. Then this circle equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to 5 squared the radius squared. In the middle diagram here, we have an asteroid, a little star, which is another example of an implicit relation between x and y defined as x to the power of 2 over 3 plus y to the power of 2 over 3 is equal to 1. Now, the last example of an implicit relation, just a random crazy equation which produces a random crazy graph. 
in all the equations here, we can see that we no longer have a y being isolated to one side of the equation, as in an explicit function. Now, in an implicit relation, both x and y are implicitly related together at various locations in the equation. In some cases, it is possible to solve an equation for y explicitly as a function of x. For example, the circle equation. If we solve this equation for y, we actually get two answers in this case. y is equal to square root of 5 squared minus x squared. Second answer, y is equal to just the negative form of this guy. Negative square root of 5 squared minus x squared. See, once we convert a circle equation to an explicit function, finding the derivative is easy, right? Because all we have to do is apply the power rule along with the chain rule. And let me show you how to do that. Well, before you apply the power rule, it might be a good idea to write this function in the power form, right? So square root is to the power of 1 over 2, right? 5 squared minus x squared, okay? Now, let's find the derivative. So the derivative here will be y prime is equal to, let's apply the power rule first, bring the exponent to the front, 1 over 2 bracket, now exponent minus 1. So 1 over 2 minus 1, we get negative 1 over 2, right? And inside the bracket, we have 5 squared minus x squared. Now it's the time to apply the chain rule, which is we always got to follow by taking the derivative of whatever inside the bracket. Okay, so taking the, take the derivative of 5 squared, well, the deri derivative of any constant is 0, right? Now, take the derivative of negative x squared, we have negative 2x. Right? Chain rule. Okay? And that's it. See, if we can somehow convert an implicit relation to an explicit function, finding the derivative is easy. Right? However, that's not always possible. For example, for this crazy equation here, it is simply impossible to completely isolate y to one side of the equation, to have y explicitly defined as a function of x. Well, that's not cool then. If we cannot convert an equation to have y explicitly defined as a function of x, then how are we going to be able to find the derivative for an implicit relation? <sighs> Luckily, we can still find the derivatives for an implicit relation by using the method of implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation. Which is indeed nothing more than a special case of the famous chain rule. <laughs> I bet you already can't wait to see what this thing called implicit differentiation is all about. Well, let's find out. <laughs>